Now, before we get into some of these, um, some of these nutritional deficiencies, I also wanted to talk a little bit about, let's move that out of the way. Also wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other properties of grain, not just what, not just the gluten aspect, because we focus so much already on gluten, but I want to focus a little bit on some of the other things that are found in grains. Um, one being pesticides, another being something called a mycotoxin or mold toxins. Number three, excessive omega-6 fatty acids. These, and the reason why I want to talk about these three is, again, going beyond gluten, is that um, they can also impact or, or affect your sex life. And, and so pesticides, many of these mimic estrogen. So guys, um, this is going to definitely impact, impact your ability to, to, to have sexual function. Ladies, this is going to create a problem for you because hyperestrogenism has been actually linked to sexual dysphoria dysfunction as well in females. So anytime you're being exposed to chemicals that have hormone-inducing effects, in this case, the mimicking of estrogen, you can, really, uh, you can really implode your sex life. And then we have mycotoxins. There's one in particular called xerolenone. A lot of times it's abbreviated as Zen. It's a mycotoxin produced by a type of mold called fusarium. And this particular mycotoxin is also an estrogen mimicker. And so it also has been shown to create problems in both men and women in terms of sexual function. And then we have omega-6. Omega-6 fatty acids, um, when your diet has a, 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 so what should your omega-6 to omega-3, so if we're talking about omega-6 to omega-3 ratio should be somewhere in the neighborhood of four to one, at least four to one, meaning, uh, meaning for, every, uh, for every one omega-6 you eat, you should eat, or for every four omega-6 you eat, you should eat at least one, uh, one th omega-3. Most Americans are somewhere here, 16 to one or higher. And what, when I test people in my practice, uh, a lot of times we're seeing 30 to one ratios in a lot of these individuals. And, and a lot of them don't want to have sex, right? Their, their sex life is almost non-existent. Their libido's on the floor. They just really could care less. And this, this has to do with vascular flow because um, high levels of omega-6 actually can drive up the inflammatory process along with low levels of omega-3. And when you don't have a good balance there, then blood flow and the endothelial dysfunction is absolutely affected. And this is going to make um, blood flow into the clitoris and blood flow into the penis diminished. And so it's going to affect sexual uh, quality, but also sexual desire. So these are three other components to grain. So some people say, well, I'm not gluten sensitive. I don't need to be worried about, about grain as, as a food. Well, you, you do, if, especially if you're eating grains that are bucked up with pesticides and mold toxins. And by the way, grain is the number one source of mycotoxin in the human diet today. It's the number one source, our, our, especially in the U.S., where we don't really have this great measuring and monitoring system in place to measure for mold toxins in the food. So this is a big one if you're eating grain. And then, of course, the omega-6, omega-3 ratio of grain is, is super high in omega-6. So when you're a heavy, heavy grain consumer, you're getting massive quantities of omega-6, very, very low levels, if any at all, of omega-3 driving up vascular dysfunction. Now, we could also argue in today's modern American diet, we could add number four to this list over here, and that would be excessive carbohydrate consumption. Excessive carbohydrates lead to insulin resistance. And insulin resistance as a whole host of different vascular problems that come with it um, that can lead to rectal dysfunction and vascular flow, proper vascular flow into the sexual glands and organs. So again, the excessive carbohydrate component, which drives insulin resistance and diabetes is just another fourth. We'll put that as icing on the cake for something else that can also cause uh, poor sex function that has nothing to do with gluten, but everything to do with grain. Okay. 
One of the other aspects to, to gluten exposure and to, and to poor diet in general is malnutrition. And we know that gluten can impact a person's GI tract and cause vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And we also know that many of these vitamin and mineral deficiencies can impact the quality of, of your sexual function. And so some, this is not a comprehensive or exhaustive list by any stretch, but I wanted to point out a few uh, very, very strong um, research correlation. And so vitamin D has been being studied more and more of late. And so we know that vitamin D deficiency can cause sexual dysfunction and erectile dysfunction in men. Um, it's needed for adequate blood flow to the penis and it's crucial for sexual activity and there are a number of different mechanisms behind it. But we do know, I think a last study I read showed that 60% of those at diagnosis with gluten sensitivity at the time of their diagnosis had vitamin D deficiency. And a, a good percentage, even a year after following a gluten-free diet, continued to persistently have vitamin D deficiency even after changing their diet. So this is a simple one that you can measure and that's one of the reasons why it's on the board tonight, because if you haven't asked, uh, if you're struggling sexually and you haven't had this measured, ask your doctor to measure your 25 OHD. And what you're shooting for is for that value to be at least 50 nanograms per milliliter in the blood. And so that's, that's kind of what you, you want to ask them to measure it, because if it's not at least 50, and the reason why I say at least 50 is the reference range for these tests, a lot of times a reference range, depending on the lab, will go as low as 20. So in essence, they'll tell you 20 is normal, even though 20 I would consider to be very, very deficient. Anything really less than 50 I would consider to be deficient. But most doctors, you'll have, your level might be 21 or 25 or 30 and they'll tell you it's fine and they'll tell you it's normal even though there's a tremendous benefit to getting your level above that 30 and into that 50 range. So again, know that so that when you get it tested, you can uh, appropriately respond either through supplementation or through, uh, or through getting additional uh, foods that contain vitamin D or getting sunshine. Omega-3 fatty acids, which we talked about a minute ago, um, Grains are very poor food sources of omega-3 fatty acids, almost non-existent in grain as a, as a whole, as a food. But the importance of omega-3 fatty acids, the increase in endothelial nitric oxide production, which is what causes the, the vessels to dilate, and this is true of men and women. So like women in, in the clitoris, which is gorged with blood during sexual arousal, is, is kind of synonymous to the penis being engorged with blood. And that area needs to be engorged with blood. And the way that happens is through nitric oxide production. And so you want the nutrients present that will help you produce this compound um, to help with arousal and stimulation. So again, this is not just for men, it's also for women. We know that vitamin B3, there's, a, there's studies on vitamin B3 that show all by itself to just give extra vitamin B3 or niacin can enhance erectile, erectile function and, and uh, performance in men. And then we also know that vitamin C, E, folate all play a role in that same molecule right here. You'll see this over and over again, this nitric oxide. What's happening? Uh, nitric oxide is necessary for erectile function as an, as an, overall, uh, or as an overall chemical in that process. So hard to hard to maintain good function without it. Now, a few other things that, that we've got here, just a couple of research studies to show you the impact of hypomagnesium. So, so this is a, a research study on magnesium deficiency, and this is in elder adults, uh, but low levels of magnesium in the elderly and patients, especially with moderate and reduced kidney function. So um, what reduces kidney function as a general rule of thumb? Um, high blood sugar, right? Too much blood sugar, diabetes or prediabetes um, can damage the kidneys. We know that gluten can damage the kidneys, but beyond that, magnesium deficiency, um, magnesium itself improves or helps to improve rectal dysfunction in these types of individuals with stage three, four kidney dysfunction. Niacin, as I mentioned earlier, so niacin alone can improve the quality or the erectile function in patients suffering from moderate to severe uh, ED. 
and dyslipidemia. So again, nutrients are very important for how your body is supposed to do its work, right? And you know, sex is one of those functions. And so if you are years into gluten-induced damage to your GI tract, causing malabsorption, causing poor digestion and micronutrient deficiencies, then what ultimately is going to end up happening is your body's not going to have the baseline ingredients that are necessary or needed for it to do what it needs to do. Now, one of the nutrients that I, I, I left off this list, but I think I should, I should probably add it, is zinc. There have been a number of research studies showing that zinc improves uh, sexual function, and one of zinc's roles is actually in the proper metabolism of sex steroids, estrogen, and testosterone. So zinc would also be very, very important as a nutrient uh, for you to tap into. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.